What is going on guys, Joey Friends here Flex Training Systems and today I was going through uh, the, some of the questions that I got yesterday and the one that kind of stood out to me was there's a lot of uh, young hopefuls asking about advice um, for new coaches and I'm actually going to pull up an email if I can find it in the middle of this video. Um, so there's a, there's a young aspiring coach that, uh, wrote me some, wrote me some questions and they were just asking, you know, how do they, how do they get started? How do they get into it? Um, things like that. So I'm gonna try to read that to you guys, answer the question here. I think I have some interesting things to say. All right. After forever <laughs> looking for this email, um, I finally found it. And he asked some interesting questions. I'm sure I know for a fact there's more people that have the same one. So I'm just going to kind of go through it and hopefully you guys take something away from it. But first, let me try to get rid of my echo by putting a pillow under my amazing microphone, which is my phone. <laughs> anyway, okay. So here we go. Okay, first question. Um, how can I start as a powerlifting coach? What certifications should I look at? I don't know if this is going to come off as controversial, but I do not hold too much value in um, really anything that you can get in formal education in terms of, I mean, it depends, like general anatomy stuff. Um, you know, here's the thing. Here's the problem, right? Formal education is very disconnected from the type of stuff that the people that are on the cutting edge of like performance, like the people that have to produce athletes like right now, you know, formal education is way behind that, right? Like super just no, hardly any of the stuff that you learn in school, or at least that I learned in school, um, did I take into what I do now? What I took the most out of school was my ability to communicate with people, my my ability to be uh, social in the ways that I need to be, to identify different personalities, to just interact with people and have empathy, right? Like that, just just being a person that deals with people. Um, but I also got a lot of practice uh, in commercial gyms before I was doing what I'm doing right now. I trained people in person for many years. I, I want to say um, I, my first ever client, I was 16 years old uh, and it was a daughter of a ridiculously wealthy family in Beverly Hills. Um, she was really young and my stepdad trained her and I got that gig through like I would train her, the parents would pay him and then he would give me part of that, right? But I've, I've been around gyms my whole life. I was in high school when I was training people. You know what I mean? I, in in freaking uh, in shot put, I remember um, I would literally just like have a group of friends and like run them through a workout. Um, so, you know, that was like after football season, I wanted to continue to do something. So I did shot put and that was what I did. Uh, just I was just always kind of teaching people how to lift. So it just kind of came naturally for me. But that skill, being able to deal with people figure out what they need and help them that is far more educational than you know most of what I learned in terms of like you know reading a book in a formal school setting you know what I mean I'm gonna tell you the personal training certifications that I took I don't even remember the fucking name is so many years ago it was like 10 years ago I don't use any of that shit like literally it's just so basic and so it just has not maybe there's like you know, they would have like how, how, how you should squat on there, but like, it's not how you, a power lifter squats. So it's, you know, it's debatable if it's even that useful. It's not, I can tell you right now it's not. So as far as formal education goes, um, I think something that helps you deal with people, uh, something, there's a question later here about branding and stuff like that. Um, you got to learn what people like enjoy or think is cool or just like, what do you like, right? That's what I did. Um, and then I built flex off of that. That was like in the very, very, very early stages. But as far as like 
learning how to like make strong lifters, I think you're better off investing time into, you know, if coaches like myself put out information, I know RTS puts out a lot of information, um, like fundamental shit that people should know, you know, there's like, do that, like learn that stuff, learn that basic stuff. And then you can start to get more experience with it. You know what I mean? Okay. Number two, how did you decide you wanted to coach powerlifters? I didn't, I actually didn't. I was just doing it and people kept asking me if I did training for the, if I did training for that. And this was, like I said, there wasn't really online too much powerlifting coaching back in the day. Um, and I was like helping I was helping Tina. I was helping one of my friends and I was like, you know what? Like, why don't I just like, people are asking for it. I guess I'm going to do it. And then once I started getting some momentum with that, um, I started competing and then I just said, fuck it, I'm going to do it full time. And it worked. Uh, it, it could have not worked. <laughs> it was just something that I kind of fell into. It wasn't like, I'm going to, uh, you know, when I was like 18, I didn't say I'm going to be a powerlifting coach. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to, that's what I'm going to do. I was like, I didn't even know what I was going to do. It just happened. Like it literally just kind of fell into it. I knew I enjoyed teaching people things and I knew that I enjoyed like mentoring people and helping people in that sense. But I didn't know specifically what it was going to be in. Okay, number three, what advice would you give yourself when you were first starting out? Oh, man. Hmm. When I was first starting out, the advice I would give myself. Oh, um, like ask for help sooner. So for example, Will William Squats was the first coach that I ever hired for Flex Training Systems. And there was like literally years that went by where I was, um, I was full pretty much. I was at like, I don't even know how many lifters at the time, but I was like really overwhelmed and I didn't want to have more um, because I was really kind of focusing on what I was doing. And I guess I wasn't, I wasn't confident enough or I didn't trust anybody. Like I just really didn't trust anybody. Um, but he communicated with me like almost every day at the gym, he asked good questions and like he was, I just got a good gut feeling about him. Um, also like, uh, Tina is kind of a, for, for the most part, she's a good to judge a character and you know, he, he got along with me and her really well got along with my brother and I was like, you know what? He's a solid dude. He's been there for a long time. I remember back in 2013, I remember seeing him around. Um, so I know he's really dedicated. It's, you know, four years went by and he's still stuck with it. Um, and that showed a, a behavioral pattern that I really like to see. And I was like, you know what? I got a good feeling about this guy. I'm going to try him out. And then now there's six coaches on flex and they all like, What's ama- What's cool about it is, and I realized this at Worlds last year, um, I was at home waking up at four in the morning, you know, just communicating with whoever I had over there handling the guys. And because I had help, I was able to be in more than one place. For example, we just had a bunch of meets go by and I had like, I had like, uh, you know, Chris and Will covering for me and Isaac and Mikey, um, you know, same thing. We just, everybody has everybody's back and we're just stronger that way. Like we're just way stronger that way. And it amazed me how resilient things can be. And I think I put a lot of pressure on myself to kind of be everywhere. There's actually a somewhat well-known lifter, um, that you guys know right now, who's, uh, I would say they're probably top two, top two or top three. And part of the reason like why he, he left is because at the time, um, I didn't have help and I could not make it to his morning session. He was not super competitive at the time, but I know he really wanted me to be there. And I felt like truly guilty and bad about not being there for that session. Um, but I mean, I just, it, it, the primetime 83 kg session had ran really, really late. I remember this nationals, it ran super late and I ended up getting fucking to bed at 2 AM and the 93s were lifting uh, the next day, super early in the morning. And my body was just not having it. Like I couldn't even keep my eyes open. I could not describe to you the feeling that I felt. It was like, 
it was a ti- it was tired, but it was also like a pain <laughs> um, because I had been going for many days already <sighs> of doing that. So I was just like, I couldn't be there for a session. He knew ahead of time, um, but you know, it just meant a lot to him, and that was a uh, that I didn't I couldn't have anyone there to help. And now I have like a billion guys that can help. You know what I mean? So it's just. Uh, and then we have guys that aren't even like official yet, but they step up and they're on the team and they help out, um, you know, and that's the kind of shit that just makes flex that much stronger is because we're, we're, it's like a network, right? We're big. Uh, everybody has everybody's back. So yeah, just find good people and trust them sooner. <laughs> I know you could go really wrong with that if you trust the wrong people. Uh, but yeah. Okay. Number four, how can I gain recognition early on? See, that's the thing you should not be looking for recognition unless you deserve it. So if you get recognition early on, but you haven't done anything, you haven't proven yourself, you have not, you have no stock in anything. It's so, it's so crazy to me how similar powerlifting is to like the real world, like, like stock market. And you guys know, uh, I'm going to just leave it at that stock market. Um, people always go for the blue chips, right? They go for the tried and true, been there a long time, safe, you know you're getting a good product, you know you're getting good results, right? The like and it and it always ends up being, you know, out of a gazillion companies, it's like S&P 500 is carried by like five. You know what I mean? Like five like juggernauts, five or 10 juggernauts. Everything else is like shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like that in powerlifting. Everyone is going to This is the hard part about trying to be a new coach, right? Unless you're in already with like a big organization or something, if if you get a, you're you're basically not gonna get any of the lifters that are decent or strong and they want to win now. Those lifters cannot afford to go with someone that's figuring it out. They need to get results now. They need to they need to go with someone that's tried and true, that's been there, done that. That like the achievement that you want with that coach, they've already done it, right? They've literally already done it. They've already gone that gone that distance and all that. Another thing to think about is, I mean, not everybody's at that level, of course. Like most people are not at that level. And that's why sometimes when people inquire, I say, you don't need to go with me because of like, you could literally go with um, any, any of the other coaches. You can go with Chris, my brother. He's really good with a specific type of lifter. And it gives you guys an opportunity to build a relationship together. And like, he can make you relevant. You know what I mean? And you guys can have that kind of, you know, coach lift their relationship rising up through the ranks. And that's how, that's how I was with a lot of my guys too. You know what I mean? Like, j- like I didn't know John Hack was going to be what he was. I, I, I remember, I think he had like a 1650 total or something like that. And he had like a bad weight cut and I looked at his numbers and, and I saw his weight cut and I was like, we could fix this. And I think we could do some damage. Um, and we ended up going on and do great things. And then, you know, then Russ came along and the same thing, like, Russ, what you guys forget is like he had to continue, like he had to continue to get stronger every year, literally every year. Like if he didn't, if there was a year where he just stagnated, he would have lost. Um, and it's like that with a lot of weight classes, right? You got to, the comp, the, like there's pressure, like you have to keep getting better or someone's going to lap you. So you got to earn it. You got to show up every, you got to show up every year. You got to keep producing lifters. You got to start small, start with people in your level, start with people that, um, you know, I mean, shit, I mean, some people, you might have to work for free a little bit, you know what I mean? You, just to get the ball rolling. Um, you know, maybe you do, I don't know, a couple months, you just work with some random guys at the gym. I don't do that. Um, everybody here on flex pays, uh, so, you know what I mean? It's just like a respect thing. Uh, if they're like a, if there are like a formal, like, I hate the word client, but if they like work with us, like we're giving them programming and coaching, then yes, like everyone's paying. I don't do the, here's the thing. Like if you try to sponsor someone and like, they're not paying for it. Like they don't, it's like, they don't respect it. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't have value to them um, because they know they're getting it for free. You know, it's like an abundant thing. Um, it's just like a, it's just like a respect thing, especially like the busier we get, the less time that we have. Um, but yeah, it's very hard to get recognition early on. I can think of a couple guys that have been doing it the right way. They work from the ground up, you know, they start out small and it's been like three or four years. And I mean, I mean, shit, if I had to guess, I think one of them has like 30 or 40 lifters. 
um, after putting in three to five years of work. I mean, you know, it's not, it's, it's, I don't think, I don't know if people like, here's the thing, like you're going to put in a lot of work to try to get somewhere in an extremely saturated, um, competitive field where something like that, like you're offering already exists probably, you know what I mean? It's really hard. I don't want this to be a discouraging video, but it's like that with anything. It's so impossibly hard to break into an already established industry. It is so freaking hard. You know what I mean? And you know, yeah, it's just hard guys. I would, I don't want to say do, don't do it. I want, I just want to say you're going to put in a lot of time. You're going to put a lot of effort. It should be like a side thing for you. You should have something main. It's, it's, it's like, it's like trying to be a pro in any sport, right? Don't, don't bet the house on it. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't think it's the same level of difficulty. Maybe getting to the top, top. I don't know. I mean, power things very small and obscure. If, if anybody who's like super, not like super smart, but like smart enough and you know, you're a good leader and you know how to like, you have something that you can provide to people and that they believe in. It's possible with time, right? None of my people that are strong now are like out of the blue. Like, and that's something that I'm always going to freaking be so proud of. Delaney, Amanda, Jesus, um, Russ, uh, Keiko, uh, missing someone, Mikey, um, you know, any of the guys that you, any of the people that you guys see is years of work. It's literally been years of work. It is not like some of them faster than others, but it's not like, you just default came in good. Now Lugo, Lugo's been strong. You know what I mean? But I'm, I'm, we're looking to take him to the next level. He's, he's rather new and unknown in these parts, but we're going to change that. Um, okay. How do you gain, uh, early recognition, uh, in terms of social media and branding? I mean, I suck at that stuff. I just literally go with stuff that I like and I attract people that like that. I don't think people care about that too much. Um, but it is important to have a brand that is recognizable so that people can identify you. You know what I mean? You shouldn't be like some like random obscure thing. My dream job, number five and final one, my dream job is to do what you're doing, at least something similar. What can you say about getting into that position? Um, you gotta be at the right place at the right time. You need to be a part of a historical event. Uh, I was part of like, you know, the John Hack, Brett Gibbs thing. That was a legendary me that I'm telling you guys, like I was around powerlifting before that moment. And I was around powerlifting after that moment and powerlifting after that moment. Like it was like a, it was like, it was like, it's like AD and BC. Like from that moment on, everything was different. Everything was different. It changed then. And I was, I was at the center. I was, I mean, John was at the center of it, but I was like right there with them. You know what I mean? And that was very life changing. And then we just, it was literally just like fucking up from there. And then 2017 happened and it just exploded. 2018, we kept growing, but it was harder. It was a little bit harder of a year. 2019 popped off like disgusting. One of the best years because that's when those guys that have been working with me for years that really start to sh shine. They had really start to build up and come through. And you know, 2019 was crazy. And then 2020, obviously you guys know what happened. I had a good year that year competing, um, but then we got locked down and then 2021 we had nationals. And now it's just like, now it's just, just a, it's like a snowball going downhill. It's just growing and rolling and rolling and rolling. So it's hard for me to give advice for that because you, all you can do is just, um, like if I try to think of other people that have done it, it's very, very few. You got to coach someone with the name naturally, like they just have to like you and you have to do it. You can't like, if you go after them, I mean, there's so many problems with that. Like trying to recruit people. It's just, it's just not good. Um, but if you happen to coach someone that can, that you can build up and make strong and they become somewhat relevant, then, you know, and they, they, they ride with you and they're, they're respectful and they're loyal to you and things like that. And they shout you out and all that. People are going to know that that was you that helped them. And then they're going to want to, maybe they don't like, maybe, yeah, I mean, I mean, here's the thing, right? Some people, there could be a better coaching option for them, but they just don't want it because they don't like that person. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's fine. Um, so I, that's why I always say like, everybody has something to offer. I have six unique coaches on flex aside from myself and then Tina, right? 
Every single one of them is different and every single one of them has their own personality and they have their own people they click with and their own methods that they really enjoy. I mean, everything kind of derives from flex and we all share the same brain somewhat. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I got for it. It's very, I can't, it's so hard to break into an industry, right? Um, it's just really, really hard. You got to do it the honest way. If you do it fake, if you do it, like people are going to know and they're going to talk. You're going to be in group chats and people are going to talk shit about you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like people are going to, they're going to be like, oh, what? Like why does person change up? Like they're being super fake or like they're really desperate doing this thing. Like it doesn't make sense. So, you know, you can't, you know, you got to do it authentically and you got to put in the time and you got to, if you're passionate about it, here you go. I'll leave you with this, right? Two things about passion. One is a very... I've heard it so many times now over the years. It's like you can't fake passion until you run into someone that's truly passionate and then you fucking get your ass handed to you. Right. And the next one, um, is, is like passion. Like, for example, you guys see those pictures of me, like behind Jesus screaming in his ear or screaming at Jesse Norris or screaming at whoever, like I don't, the videos on Russ's channel of him hitting his third squat and me losing my mind. I'll have to try to do that. I could be injured and I'm gonna do it anyway because it's a it just fucking happens like I get possessed you know what I'm saying I can't make that up because it, that's the culmination of so many it's just like we've been working for so long we've been putting this together for so long and then we finally compete and we make it real we punch it in we clock it in right it's like you take the cargo you've been gathering 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 and you finally cash it in and this goal that you've had for so long you finally get it I mean that's what it's all about at the end of the day and that's just my passion showing, you know, um, and you can't fake that. So that is something you need to under like identify. Do you have that passion? That'll just fucking save you a shitload of time. If you, if you have that passion, none of this shit matters. Cause it's going to have, you're going to make it, you're going to make it as long as you stay objective, you don't have an ego, you know, you, 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 it's all about getting better, be a student of the game. Um, Everything has to be honest. Everything has to be done right. And in a little industry like this, you cannot afford like mistakes. Like if you, if you start getting a bad name or, you know, you do bad with the lifters like too many times, I mean, people are going to see that and you're screwed. Like you're just, now it's like impossible to like get, get your, is this, like I said, it's the same thing with the stock market. If you have like five companies that do the same thing and like two of them have a perfect record and they're doing great and they have nothing wrong. And then the other ones have like some drama, they're going to shit. Look at Netflix. Go look at the Netflix chart. Let me know, let me know how that looks. Anyway. Wow, this is a long video. Um, <laughs> hopefully you guys are able to take something away from that. Um, yeah, I mean, I get this all question all the time. I just figured I'd make a video about it. I My next video, I think I'm going to do... I'm going to gather questions from you guys. And I'm going to have Isaac and Jesus, I believe... Uh, come on and answer them um, just so you guys can kind of get to like I want everybody to meet all the other coaches you know introduce them to my YouTube channel right anyway thank you guys for making it this far uh, I hope it was all right <laughs> uh, this is a very like I didn't even think about this video before I did I just opened up my laptop and was like all right this is what I'm doing today um, but anyway if you guys made this far let me get a hashtag real one in the comments down below I'll see you guys in the next one peace